Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. President, parents, volunteers, you to know that is, it is indeed an honor to have you with us today. We welcome you to a school who is building a winning tradition. We are winners all the time. Secretary Bell, who's to my right. Please stand, Secretary Bell. Let's give him a hand. As most of you know, Secretary Bell is Secretary of the Office of Education. Um, they got a chance to see some of our students dramatize Shakespeare, got a chance to see some of our students who won last year citywide in Math Counts. And therefore, they got an idea of what some of us are alike, but they didn't get a chance to see all of us. But during the year, we hope that they will have an opportunity to come back and see you again. I would now like for President Reagan to come forward. Thank you. Thank you all very much. And Secretary Bell and Principal Vera White, ladies and gentlemen, and most of all, you, the students, who are in and will be entering this fine school. It's a genuine honor to be with you today to help celebrate the vitality of young minds and the superb education that Jefferson Junior High School provides. Last year, Secretary Bell and the Department of Education awarded Jefferson a Secondary School Recognition Program Award, and today, in just the brief time I've been here, I've seen why. Jefferson is truly one of the outstanding schools in America. I've just come from an excellent math count seminar with your teachers, Mrs. Sue White and Mr. John Coleman, and I've been thinking, would you mind if I borrowed Mrs. White and Mr. Coleman to help the Congress with the budget? <laughs> and I'm delighted to be with you today because Jefferson Junior High is setting an example of academic excellence for schools all across our country. Students at Jefferson Junior High receive just the training they need to go on to successful careers in high school and from there to good jobs in college. This school I've already sensed hums with excitement. It's sort of like being with a football team the week before the opening game. At Jefferson Junior High, the game is life itself, and the goal is education, and I can tell you already know you're going to win. It's that sense of teamwork at this school that's impressed me most this morning. The teachers and staff play their part with enthusiasm and skill. To keep themselves at the top of their form, they constantly evaluate themselves and each other, and they participate often in teacher workshops. And in the classroom, Jefferson Junior High teachers and, and high school teachers and staff never stop giving. I understand, for example, that the teachers participating in today's orientation session are volunteering their time. Parents of Jefferson Junior High students also play a critical role. And again, they play it, I've seen already, with enthusiasm. Parents have organized themselves to get in touch with other parents if their children fail to appear in school. They help with activities, and parents who are members of the Home School Association help to give Jefferson teachers the honors that they deserve. I have been in schools back several years ago when I was governor, state of California, and I have seen such a difference here and in some of the schools that I was in. Here, I'm sure there's no mother that's going to say to me, as one did in California, that she found out almost by accident that her son leaving home every morning for 10 weeks had never shown up in school, and no one in school ever contacted or told her uh, that he wasn't present. That's just an impossibility here, I know. But believe me, it's the kind of parent support that you're getting that 
can make the difference between a mediocre school and a true temple of learning. You Jefferson mothers and fathers are showing parents throughout the district and throughout America that it can be done. And you certainly, for one, have my heartfelt gratitude. The stars of the Jefferson team are you, the students. And when I say stars, I mean stars. I've been watching and listening this morning. They haven't given me very much time. But I don't think I've ever seen a brighter or more attentive group of young Americans. When I think back to my own school days, uh, I've just seen Shakespeare being portrayed here. I didn't run into that until I was well into high school. I understand that foreign languages, I didn't run into those until I was well into high school. Now this school will expect a great deal of you. And you will be asked to arrive on time and to work hard all day and develop your talents through activities like music and sports. And if it's any consolation, I'll tell you that I have a lot of homework to do too because at the end of your day, I know that's when you just come to the moment when you then have to face homework. Jefferson Junior High will hold you to high standards, but that's not a prescription for gloom. Far from it. It's a recipe for happiness and success. This school holds a firm belief in the dignity and the worth of every one of you and is going to hold each of you or help each of you to live up to your very best. Yeah, there'll be low moments. They are in any great enterprise. But most of the time, you'll be caught up in the excitement of learning. And at the end of your time here, you will be standing tall, facing the future with confidence and courage. You students are the stars of the team, but let me say a few words about your coach, your principal, Mrs. Vera White. Now, I've spent some time with Mrs. White, and I can only describe her as a genuine torrent of energy and ideas. Her devotion to this school shines through in all that she says and does. She's proud of the teachers, proud of the facilities, and proud of each one of you. If Jefferson Junior High really were a football team, I think Mrs. White could take you to the Super Bowl. I know some of the things that she said, some from hearing them myself and some from hearing them from others. She said, I let every child know I care enough to make them learn in school. I have high expectations of everyone, including myself. I tell the kids, just go for it. And that's what I do, too. Every student in my school knows that I expect them to succeed. And you do. That's the way Jefferson Junior High is, a team where teachers, staff, parents, students, and principal work together to achieve excellence. You're winners, every one of you, and you're showing schools throughout America that they can be winners too. I want to thank you for inviting me to share in the Trojan spirit. And if I can leave you with just one thought, it's this. Always remember that the key to America's future lies in your hearts and minds, and that you'll get only as much out of your education as you put in. So. To borrow a few words from your principal, go for it. Thank you. Thank you, and God bless you all. I know there's a microphone there, and I had hoped any time my people know that I get around young people, I hope that I will have time to take any questions. I'm afraid that. Our time is about exhausted, but could I cheat and ask this? Could I take one question? Yes. Good morning, Mr. President. I'm Armenta Thompson, associate editor of the Jefferson Trojan Times. And my question to you is, what do you think the most important issue facing today's education? I think the most important issue, uh, and it's very obvious that it's taking place here, is this drive for excellence. 
about a year ago, we got our first report from a commission that I'd appointed on excellence in education because of the problems facing schools throughout this country. There was a nationwide uh, problem. 10% uh, fully of the 17-year-olds in our country were functionally illiterate. And in this, and to, uh, to get by, many schools had reduced the requirements in math and science, foreign languages, had gone to extended uh, freedom choosing courses that the students wanted to take. And the result has been a great decline over the last 20 years in the SAT scores, the college and university entrance scores. And in just this year, since that commission's report was uh, made public and transmitted to all the schools, there has been just a revolution. It shows that education, the teachers, staff, administrators of schools, and I think parents and teachers were waiting and begging for this drive for excellence that we now see. And uh, here, your requirements uh, for math, for science, for the things that you're doing are evident that that is the most essential thing. It's too late uh, once uh, we get behind and uh, to try and catch up with those who have gone before. But you here are now the beneficiaries of that. And I have a feeling that this school didn't wait for that excellence in education report. I have a hunch that you've been uh, practicing it and uh, you were probably one of the examples they used. Well, you're more than welcome. And let me just close and say this, because I'm sure that if I had time for more, somebody would ask her. I'm going to tattle on your principal now. She let me know that sometimes the age of the facilities here uh, concerns you, and you, you wonder about that. Don't. Uh, I, I attended six elementary schools myself and uh, one high school, and in none of them was there a library. Uh, I think the, the facilities aren't nearly as important as the humanity in the facilities, but I, uh, I find this uh, quite sufficient in view of <laughs> what I learned in myself. I could even stand here in the gymnasium and tell you that in our high school gymnasium, in my day, there were a few places on the floor that you couldn't try for a basket because the beams holding the ceiling up interfered. So I think you can be proud of your facilities, of your teachers, of your whole school here, and I know that you are. God bless you all.